was that ruckus? Uh, what ruckus? I was just in my office and I heard a ruckus. Hello, everybody. Doing something a little different today because this is irritating. And I will explain myself a little bit afterward. So, online gaming has its pros and cons. More cons than pros. And this here is the perfect current example. For those of you who don't know, uh, Friday the 13th as a whole, the license has been, what's the word I'm looking for? Has been in cahoots lately because I don't know the two parties involved, but apparently it's like the creator and the writer. They got into a tizzy and they're like, oh, you know, this and that and the other thing. And a massive legal fallout ensued. And long story short with that, everything Friday the 13th has been affected. So there's a stipulation where new content cannot be created without consent. Or it's, it's, it's so much red tape, it's ridiculous. But as a side effect, this is Friday the 13th running on Xbox. Xbox Series X to be exact. Uh, I downloaded this for Xbox One X like a year after it came out. I really enjoyed myself. I actually made a video about how to take advantage of double XP with you and a friend. And there was a little glitch you could do. Long story short, you get next to a picnic table in Pakanak Small. You take the Pakanak Small map, you have your friend run over to the picnic. There's a, a trio of picnic tables, which I will actually show afterwards. There's a trio of picnic tables that if you stand next to the end of any of them in a very specific way, and Jason grabs the counselor, the counselor could escape while Jason gets the XP for a kill. And you could exploit that for the entire 20 minutes that the match goes on for. And during a double XP weekend, I got my account up to level 150. Very happy with it. I unlocked all the Jasons. I unlocked all the counselors. I unlocked all of the perks and kills for Jason and the ability to use any weapon for any Jason. So, like, for instance, Friday 13th Part 6, Jason has uh, a spear. Iconic, right? And then, I, I don't know, Friday 13th Part 8, I can't remember exactly, but Friday 13th Part 8, Jason uses a machete. So now you could go on in with your options, and you could have Jason from Part 4 use a spear, which is great because it has a lot of range. So now, going back to the legal bullshit that is going on by 13, they are pulling this game from all storefronts digitally. Uh, and I believe physically too. So they're just going to pull all copies remaining if they're out there physically on the store shelves at like Walmart, Target, Best Buy. You should come across physical games at Best Buy, right? So, with the game coming off the shelves the end of this year. At the end of next year, which Ilphonic says, I don't know what to believe on that. Okay? You're not going to be able to play this game online anymore. The problem with that is that the progress you have made, and there's a very good reason why I have this on screen right now. All of the progress that you work for, whether if you glitch it like I did or played for years and did it legit, this game is very grindy. So all the shit I unlocked... All the time I spent unlocking this stuff, regardless of how I got it, I still grinded, I just expedited the process. You're going to be met with this message. And the problem with this on console, well, you'll see. If I hit the A button to retry, I'm sorry, no, 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 we're not going to go to log in. We're trying to emulate what happens when the server shut down. So keep in mind, again, I'm level 150, I have all of my Jason skins and weapons and kills and counselors and their skins and perks unlocked. So, let's just say we hold on to Friday 13th on whatever console we have. PC, which is a big point we'll get to later, or PS4, which I do have. I have this on all platforms. Or Xbox. Let's go offline mode. Hey, you know, we could still play this offline, right? Are you sure? Experience points will not be earned. Proceed into offline mode? All right, I can't play online anymore. It's, uh, it's... January 1st, 2025. Let's try and play this offline. Controller in hand. Okay. Elite Series 2. I'm hitting all the buttons here. 
I'm hitting, I'm hitting all the face buttons right now. Nothing's happening. Keypad, triggers, start and select. This is a digital paperweight. So the 40 bucks I spent, down the shitter. PS4 version, I think I got that on sale for 20, down the shitter. PC version I got, down the fucking shitter. A hundred bucks, between all the stuff I purchased years ago, is fucking gone. As you can see, I'm becoming visually aggravated by it. True, this is maddening. Take it or leave it, love it or hate it, this game is a love letter. A love letter to the Friday the 13th franchise. It's janky. Characters kind of look like Play-Doh, like all the counselors. Jenny, bad, whatever. The hair isn't that well rendered. But that's not the point of Friday the 13th. When you watch Friday the 13th Part 6, it's janky. It's cheesy. It's... You got sex in it. You got blood and violence. And, you know, Tommy Jarvis is trying to take Jason down again. It's cheesy for a reason. The games emulate that. And it pains me to see this. It pains me to see this. This is unplayable. But... This is where games preservation becomes very important. And a majority of games preservation comes from either, I like to say, ethical piracy or emulation. A lot of people argue that emulation is. It depends on the way you're looking at it. I am playing Tears of the Kingdom on Yuzu. It's fucking amazing. If I had a disposable income, I sure as hell would buy a Switch. And Tears of the Kingdom, I would actually get the, uh, the limited edition Tears of the Kingdom Switch. Which doesn't come with the game, and it's 350 Needless to say, the game is that good, I would buy it. There have actually been studies that showcase that people who pirate and emulate games are more than likely to buy multiple copies of it. Fire 13. Bought it, PlayStation, or Xbox, Xbox Series, and PC through Steam, not the Epic Game World. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to swap, swap over, switch over, whatever, to PC. And you're going to see I have this running on PC. Hold on one second. Now, as I switch over, I need to redo my uh, console overlay. So we're going to do this. Ah, there we go. Get rid of this. And I do need a second screen on, so I'm going to apply switch to the Xbox. And I'm going to look myself up so I can see the chat. So I have myself up here. And there's a commercial. Star Trek Strange New Worlds, huh? So. I'm going to let this play for 20 seconds as I crack open. My gamer feel. This is actually pretty good stuff. The ingredients are great, by This is good. This is the Pac-Man. This is cherry red. So, put on my head. This is painful. This is super painful. You know, I mean, I understand not the need for online games. I understand their function. And it, God, this is so aggravating. It comes down to, I understand, I think we all understand that gaming as a developer, like, Creating games as a developer and publishing them is very expensive. Uh, I think, what, Assassin's Creed Origins had like thousands or hundreds of people working on it or something. But Assassin's Creed Origins is something we could play offline. And I always go back to Ghost Recon Wildlands as the best example. Actually, that and Borderlands 3 are two of the... Oh, that's just... Those are two of the absolute best examples of how you could do an online game without the need. You do have your updates and you do have your DLC, but 
if online should shit the bed one day, say for instance, the servers go down and you can't do co-op anymore, or if your internet should shit the bed, it happens. There's sometimes there's outages or there's maintenance to servers. So your servers, your service from these servers is unreliable or it's shady. But you could still play Borderlands 3 and Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands with offline enabled. The only thing that those games need to function is the fact that you turn them on. If the servers are down, you can't access the store. You can't access uh, multiplayer. I think you could do uh, system link multiplayer. I don't know. That's a thing of the past. Either way, those games function when they are offline. Friday the 13th here doesn't work like that. Now, uh, I don't know if I'm going to run into the same issue on PlayStation 4. I have my PS4 Pro uh, behind my monitor here. I have my Series X and my PS4 directly next to each other. So I, from experience, I know that the Xbox version is, is a fucking paperweight. But the PS4 version I have to test. This is where piracy, if you want to call it that. I would say games preservation comes into play. This is Friday the 13th, the game, the same exact game that I just showcased on Xbox, running on PC. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my... Uh, Put my uh, window up here. And what we're going to do... I have another Xbox controller here. We're going to go to Endgame, okay? Now remember, this is the PC version with no online connectivity enabled whatsoever. Uh, this is a cracked version. Uh, not going to mention where I got it from because, you know, weird with that shit. But long, long story short is you could go online and you could search Friday 13th, the game, PC download. And a bunch of stuff will pop up. I found a working link. I was, like, searching frenetically for this, by the way. Because I'm like, dude, this is one of my favorite games. Like, it's not something I'll go back to a lot. But it's something I know that I could go back to periodically. Okay? So, it's audio is working. Not checking the shit. So, with the PC version here, obviously you have all of your settings, your credits, whatever. There is no customization whatsoever. Now... The, uh, the XP bar behind me, it's at zero. So, offline play, offline bots. This is where this becomes a little aggravating, even though I'm pretty sure that after everything settles, modders are going to come on in and change things. But let's just say that's not going to happen. So we still have access to all the maps. We still have access to challenges, which is actually pretty cool from what I've heard in the virtual cabin. Is amazing. But let's just go to pack an X mark, okay? This blew my mind. This is Savini Jason. We'll get to him in a second. But Friday 13th Part 2 Jason. Locked. I cannot progress to level 13. Part 3 is actually pretty cool. You can go with the NES version or the uh, film version. We're going to stick with the NES version. Uh, Friday 13th Part 4 Jason. Locked. I cannot get to level 44. Part 5, we don't care about Part 5. Let's make him blue. My personal favorite Jason. Part 6 with the spear. Can't unlock him. Quick Dex, we're talking about why online connectivity in games sucks. I cannot unlock part six, Jason, because the servers are down. That's level three. I cannot play as my favorites, part seven, Jason, because. Quest Giver, what's up, man? I'm doing something completely different today. Can't play as part seven, Jason. Can't play as part eight, Jason. Can't play as part nine, Jason. Play as... This is fucking incredible, by the way. Has anybody here played Friday 13th, the game? I'm begrudgingly streaming this today, man. I was going to do Halo 4, which is good. Not great. It's good. But considering the problem here, I had to stream this today and prove a point. I have to beat a single player campaign in Marvel's Avengers by the Okay. So, what's going on here? Okay. Then it'll be gone forever. That is, I, I like how the chat's coming up over Jason here. This is awesome. This is the problem with online games. Ah, okay, QuestGiver. Thank you for stopping in and saying hello, though. I truly appreciate that. This is why I love my community. This is why I love it. Thank you. Yep. Now, I showcased this before, Quick Dex. Okay? If I log on to my Xbox version and the servers are down, what ends up happening is this here... I can't select anything. So the game I spent 40 bucks on, I also bought it on PlayStation 4 for 20 bucks, 
and PC on sale for 20 bucks. So I spent about 100 bucks for everything. I'm not gonna be able to access it. And this is where games preservation becomes important because the lines between games preservation and piracy are blurred. I downloaded this two days ago and made sure it worked yesterday. Which is blocked work. Ah, oh, fuck, dude. Sorry to hear that. But you're here now. That's all that matters. So if we were doing this on Xbox, I would not be able to access anything. So that game I bought and put all this time into, I, I glitched to level 150. It took half the time. Can't do it anymore. But on PC, we could still par partially access We could still partially, sorry, access this. So let's go to offline box, okay? And pack an axe mall. Now, dude, this is fucking... This is awesome. I love this. This is so cool. Is there a delay here? Okay, I'm not losing. No, dude, don't worry about your fucking French. We're all fucking adults. You can fucking curse all the fuck we want. And besides, we're playing an M-rated game, so who cares? So now, unless if a modder comes in, which I'm, I'm, I'm praying at this point they do, I can only play as three Jasons out of ten. That is literally 30% of the game. I can't access Jason Part 2. I can't access Jason Part 4, Part 6, 7, 8, or 9. Can't access anything. As you can see on the screen here, locked at level 31. However, this is cool. So I'm going to accept this here. Okay? And we're going to put on... We're going to go for three counselors. Now, in all honesty... Playing this offline kind of sucks. I mean, it's really cool to go back and visit because you're like, hey, man, this is really great. Like, this game was awesome. But now we could literally only play 30% of the game. Well, I would say 40%. Dude, this is really good. And as I was saying before you dropped on in, this game is jank, it's cheesy, but that's the point because Ilphonic on media, whatever, uh, it was. You are absolutely correct. Not on Xbox, but on PlayStation it was. Like, we could only access 30% of this. And this game is awesome, man. And the, the films are jank. They're cheesy. And the game plays like that. So this is the only way that you could genuinely enjoy this game. This looks gorgeous, by the way. Is on PC. Via a pirated copy that I had to find to download. Dude, <laughs> so easy, Jesus. That's fucking awesome, man. Seriously. I mean, he's just... Oh. No, and everybody is saying... Make them remember yes. what they did to us, Jason. Dude, this Kill is them. like... I'm happy with just this. This is just fucking... This is so cool. This is... I could just stare at this all day. Like, this is awesome. But, you know, I'm going to pause it for a second because, you know... it. it Unfortunately, Friday 13th here, the, the entire franchise license fell victim to some legalities. It's utter bullshit. Like, us fans are suffering because two creators, I think it's the writer and the creator, they're like, they're like sword fighting or whatever. And it, it sucks that it's come to this because, love it or hate it, you, when you're playing this game, it's like you're playing the film. And the maps are like painstakingly rude. This, this truly is something special, and unfortunately, we're going to lose the ability to play this unless if you go through unofficial means. And this is why I, I stand by this, this argument, I'll die on this hill, of why games preservation is so very important. Because the average John Q gamer is going to be like, oh, cool, there's a Friday the 13th game out there that I heard is actually pretty good based off of all the things I observed and, and researched and read. So let me just go and see if I can play it. Oh, well, shit. It's been taken off of the store shelves and digital storefront because of legal crap? Oh, that sucks. I'm not going to be able to play it. Now, somebody who's educated on this, like myself, who's been emulating and looking into preserving games for the long term, uh, I know how to grab stuff. This is a game that screwed the pooch on release but ended up correcting pretty decently months after release. Yes, because uh, I, I watched a few videos on this. Whenever I come upon some news or happenings that, like, I didn't say affect me, but, like, affect my interest. I'm like, oh, let me do some research. Uh, when this game came out, it was janky as fuck. And uh, if you saw, we had the Jason before that 
uh, looked like the NES version. That was like a, a free thing they released, and then they uh, they enabled offline pay, play. Thank God. Uh, so they made massive strides, and they were bug fixing up until about two years ago. Now remember, this game came out in 2017, so four years later, they were still like they got to the end of the uh, the cusp of fixing it. So I played online for a little while. Uh, I played mostly with my my bro Dave. I mean, I I've known him since the fourth grade, and we grew up idolizing Friday the Thirteenth. He was the one who really he was into horror, and he got me into. Horror. Like, even more so than I already did. So, when this first came out, it was... I wouldn't say it was... It was partially broken. But they, uh... They fixed it. So, it's an asymmetrical uh, horror game with RNG elements in it. And, um... You know, when you're playing as a counselor, you need to find a fuse to uh, start the phone. So you call in backup. And one player could play as Tommy which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, and you get traps like firecrackers, pocket knives, so if Jason should grab you, you stab him for, like, a free release. Or, like, fireworks will stun him. The AI uses it sometimes. You could also find a shotgun. Uh, you could find, like, clubs and pipes and, I think, a machete to, uh, to combat Jason. Because when you're Jason, you're OP, but when you're a counselor, you need to work with other... Oh, thank you! You need to work with uh, other counselors. I actually had this in my pod. I have a pile of, like, spare laundry on the side here. I just grabbed it this morning. Um, but Friday the 13th overall is pretty good. I played online for a brief period of time, and then I mostly played offline bots and solo play, uh, so I could go on in and unlock stuff. Like, there's the Pamela Voorhees tapes, there's the Tommy Jarvis tapes. Like, it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, this game is now lost to time. At the end of this year, you're not going to be able to purchase it or download it from a digital storefront. And this is uh, from a website... If you guys want to know, I'll talk about it in Discord because people get weird over this shit. But I found a website that had a repack of this. And here we are. Because I was like, fuck you, Friday the 13th. This game is important to me. It's partially a majority of my childhood. You know what I mean? So it sucks to see this go. But graphic tees are excellent. I love graphic tees. Let's put on our headset here and let's just kind of explore. Uh, this isn't something I'm going to be streaming regularly. I just wanted to make a point and stream because of that point today. But this is uh, running, as you can see here, with everything like set to max. And I'm running it in a window so I can see my chat in the background. I don't like streaming full screen. So you can, you can pick up knives, which is pretty cool. And you can look at the map. It's a smaller map. And where you can see the arrow right there. But dude, this Sabini Jason is fucking incredible. Like this, this is just... I could stare at this all day. This is just fucking brilliant. So I'm just going to... We're just perusing. So you'll see those little like circular pings. Those are counselors that we have to take out. So we got three. But this looks really good, man. Like, this is awesome. And, like, one of the escape routes is a car. So we could set bear traps as Jason. So we could put that down there. So if someone tries to go and repair the motor, they're going to get trapped. We also have, uh, so you'll see here, you have, like, certain vision modes. So I could see where that counselor is going. And now that they're in a house, the house will glow red. So you can go into different ready stances. So... Uh, Quick Dex, you're, you're familiar with me playing Predator Hunting Grounds. Same developer. Like, this was their first outing. Predator Hunting Grounds was their second. So you could lock doors as counselors to prevent Jason from coming in. Oh, we got somebody outside. Smash windows. You can see somebody's jumping into that house over there, and the music swells up. So yeah, dude, this is Predator Hunting Grounds, but, like, it's prequel, so to speak. And the AI is really stupid. Hey, thank you for the follow. Damaged, uh, my alerts are muted because the audio is running from my PC version here. 
so I needed to mute that. Hello! Welcome to the stream. Today's stream is more or less proving a point. That this game is going to be lost to history unless if you find a crack version online, which is exactly what this is. Fucking firecracker. Off, Jason. But this, uh, this Jason is... Oh my god, Sabini Kill Jason them. is just... I mean, I would assume it's the same engine as this because it seems like quite familiar. So, Savini, there was a, it was like a pre order bonus, or if you handed your account over to somebody who had it, it would unlock it for you. Like, there was some fishy shit in order to get it. But again, online, uh, online culture temperament is really like touchy. So, if you want to find it, just search Friday the 13th, the game, PC Repack, and you'll find it. And this is this is the version that came with it. But yeah, dude, like this, we're not going to be able to enjoy this through legitimate means uh, after, what, after the end of this year. And the servers are going to shut down at the end of next year. I think she's at the boathouse? Oh, fuck. That's the cabin. Ah! That's Jason's cabin. But there are ways to unpack this game. It's called, a, like, F13th Unpack. And you pre it's like a, a batch file that you run. Got scammed. Yeah, dude. I, like, I actually uh, I went on eBay years ago thinking that, like, it was just a, a file or, like, a version of the game. And the guy, I gave the dude 20 bucks. And then he's like, nah, dude, you gotta hand me your account. I'm like, no, thanks. He took my 20 bucks. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, dude, like this, you can't, you can't play this on Xbox anymore. I, I started the stream with what happens when you can't log in. You cannot access, you cannot access the game you played for. What's wrong with that? But now here, even though I only have three, well, this, this alone is worth playing without anything unlocked. This here is awesome. Like, and we could ship. Let's go ahead and ship. This is cool. Come here, Jason wants to hug you. What is this dude doing? Oh, he has a shotgun. Cool. Ah! Oh, oh shit! Hurt you, Jason. Right. Don't let them. I won't. Sorry, Mom. Dude, this is just fucking... And he has a, a particular trident, too. Dude, this is just... This is amazing. This is incredible. Like, this is something like... Again, I'm not streaming this regularly. I'm proving a point today. Uh, but this is something that's truly special. Because if you play this and then you watch one of the films... It, you're playing a film. Stroke map. That's my good boy. You're such a good boy. Ah, oh, you're such a good boy. Ooh, cool. Whoops. Mm -hmm. The AI is just so dumb in this. Man. Hey! Get up, Jason. Dude, the AI is not easy. What the fuck? Kill them. Will she do it? Ah! Uh. Hi! Let's see, let's stab her in- Oh, what? How did so easy? What the Jason. fuck? Don't let them. Dude, he's so cool. He is just so cool. Where'd she go? God damn it. I'm just trying to do my job here. Do you mind? Oh yeah, she's in that house. With your Jason vision. Now, considering what's happened... Ooh, cool. To uh, Friday the 13th, we're totally going to go the same route with Predator Hunting Grounds. Nice. Yes. 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 Mother. 
Get a skill for mommy. Where's Victoria? Let's see. Uh, let's go here. And this is the power box, right? I should have put a bear trap down by the, uh, the boathouse. Somebody didn't pay their bill. Alright, let's see. Okay, we just got it. Let's go to... And let's put a... I didn't put a trap down here. Okay, so just in case if she should try to repair, she's gonna get trapped. The AI is really, like, bizarre in this. Very squirrely. But dude, Savini, Jason, we'll do a... We'll do another... We'll do a couple of other maps. Again, the shorter stream today... Uh, again, just proving a point that if you enjoy this legitimately, which more power to you, man. Like, this game deserved all the attention it got. But it's going to be gone. It is going to be gone one day. And this is the only way I'm still going to be able to play. Trust me, I backed this up twice. Three times, actually. I have it on a spare hard drive and two copies on my PC here, which I need to make, like, a disc version copy. He is just so cool, man. I love how he stares at the camera. Oh, it's just badass. So cool. Where is this person? I want to murder them. They didn't call Tommy yet, which is good. Okay. Yeah, now the AI could just be really stupid and hide somewhere that you'll never find them, so we, we ultimately might have to quit out of this. But one thing a lot of hardcore fans said was there was a lot of care put into this game as far as authenticity goes. So, like, when you look at, like, whatever location in the game versus its its uh, portrayal in the films, it's, like, identical. It's really cool. We'll go for, I think, uh, the Jarvis House, which was part four. We'll go for that one next just to give you guys an idea. Fuck, man, where'd she go? She's probably hiding somewhere. So it's cool, because as a counselor, you'd hide under a bed. So Jason could come up and try and flush you out. So there's nobody under there, obviously. And then they could also hide in, like, uh... I don't know what you would call this, like a closet cupboard or something like that. But as a counselor, like you would search the drawers here, see if you could find stuff like keys to the car or like a car's battery or something like that. A, uh, a flare gun, firecrackers, etc. So the idea is stun and slow Jason down so he can't kill you while you work as a team to escape. Now you can bust through walls. It'll let us. So yeah, somebody's behind a wall. You want to scare them? You go ahead and bust through. Really cool stuff. All right, so let's see here. End game. Since we can't find a last counselor. Offline box. Okay, so let's go for the Jarvis house. And let's go for... My personal favorite, which is essentially Jason Part 3, but he's, uh, he's essentially the NES variant. <laughs> That's so cool, dude. This is awesome! 
This is truly awesome. And there's a 20 minute timer per stage, which is unfortunate. They're out there, Jason. Find them and get your revenge. Yeah, dude, the level of detail here is really good. Like, all the cans and everything like that. Like, this is awesome. And it's all going to be gone one day. God fucking damn. This really sucks. Let's see. I think it's... The yeah, Jarvis Redlands. Here we go. Oh, dude, you can hear the hum of the power box. That's awesome. <laughs> so this Jason can run, which is cool. So, like, the non-zombie Jasons can run... The zombified Jason just kind of plot after you. No one's over here. Yeah, dude, he is so cool. Are you looking? I'm pretty. Don't want to break any doors here. But, dude, again, the level of detail here, like, is really good. Like, this is so awesome. That's a frog! Holy shit, dude, check that out. Wow. Wow! Amazing! Holy crap! Gotta use the bathroom. Yeah, dude, this is so cool. And there are contact skills, too. So, like, you could, uh... You could burn someone's face off on a stove if you grab them in a house. Like, you could, uh... You could crush your head like a melon on, like, uh... A well? Like, it's so cool! I like how we're just casually strolling through this. This is cool. You can break windows, as I've been doing all along. You can actually have throwing knives, too. So, for instance, you could use a throwing knife to shatter a window. It's pretty cool. Very interactive stuff. Dude, holy shit. Oh, we can bust the radios. I forgot about that. So you can turn the radios on as a means to confuse a Jason player. Because if you see those circular pings, those are counselors making noise. So you could go ahead and, like, trick Jason to think that that ping is a counselor when it's actually a radio. So let's go here. I'm assuming they're going to try and turn the phone on. Oh, yeah. I like how he just dives through a window, like, diehard style. Where you going, buddy? Rent do. So yeah, he's in the house. Jason Vision says so. That's not even a. That's a. That's a casual jog, dude. Still in here? Some Jasons are better at breaking doors down than others. You have to unlock the door, bro. Gotcha. That's my Jason. That's my special, special boy. I, w I would assume Jason was a lumberjack at one point in his life. I'm out already! Open! Ooh, cool. We got someone. Ah! You flared me! Brush off, brush off, brush off! I gotta kill! I gotta kill! I gotta kill! I gotta kill! This is, just, this is comical. Nobody ain't calling Tommy. Oh my god. What happened? There we go. Gotcha. Oh fuck! He had a knife! God damn it. Stupid AI! Trying to run past me. 
Yeah, the AI is not very bright, man. Choke him out. Don't stop, Jason. They deserve to die. Make them. Ah, Tommy's like fucked. Wounded. They got Tommy. Wait, what? Oh, there he is. That's Tommy. Same actor from part six, by the way. I believe if you break windows, uh, counselors will take damage when they dive through. Where'd he go? I think he's... Okay, so he's hiding in this house, I think. Or maybe not. Hold on. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah, dude, this looks really good. Like, this looks excellent on PC. Like, again, everything is maxed out with a smooth 60 frames a second. This looks excellent. And I have a bunch of post-processing stuff on, too, uh, through the uh, NVIDIA control panel. So things look extra sharp. Like, this is awesome. It's such a shame, man. Dude, the radio... Holy shit, I think that's from part seven. I hope I don't get muted. This is awesome! No music for anybody. What did I tell you, kid, man? Jesus. That's cool. I have never experienced that before. Let's go here. Where is everybody? Dude, this is like, this is really. All right, so let's end this game. Let's go to another map. And let's play as, uh... I don't want to touch part five, Jason. Let's go to Crystal Lake itself. It's fucking metal, dude. All right. Let's go for seven counselors. Why not? Jumping or climbing through a broken window will damage counselors. There we go. I was talking about it. To be, dude, to be, Jason, it's so cool. This is the treat. Oh, fuck. On a tree stump? Holy shit. Dude, he's so cool. Dive. Make them remember, remember what they did to us, Jason. What did Kill they do to them. us, mommy? Dude, he is just fucking awesome. Oh, there. So, the house that you call for backup has a radio mast on it. And it's usually, like... Towards the end of each roof in the center there. I also did get this for uh, Switch via emulation, which is cool, but no name most importantly, and namely, it does not have this in it, and it doesn't run as well. But it's another way for me to preserve it, which is important to me, so I have it. Yeah, dude, this is awesome. It's actually a fact uh, that the director... Uh, I forget the guy, the director's name, but he, uh, they painted every door red, so it was easier to identify with. So if you look at all the cabins, they have red doors. Pretty cool stuff. Kill some counselors. He locked the door. Ah, that throwing knives is not easy, man. Oh, dude, you can hear the hum of the power box. That's awesome. No, no, no. 
no, no, the power box. Ah. 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 Oh god. Don't stop, Jason. They deserve to die. Make them suffer like we did. Okay. Dude, has anyone not seen Jurassic Park? Like, turn the light off! The T-Rex will get you! Oh, dude, you can see moths around the light there. That is really cool. Holy fuck. Dude, I mean, you know, you're... you're I got you, you know? Stop the semantics, man. down and make them pay oh we got another we got another let's get them and it's so cool like if you pay attention to sound it tells the whole story I love the contrail he has on him, dude. Oh, that's so cool. So stalking removes your ability to give off sound. So when you sneak up on somebody, you get the, uh, like the Nun Massacre VHS tracking effect. And when you have stalk on, which is right bumper when it powers up, you'll see the bar going up. When you have that ability full, you will not make any noise. Really cool. Ah! Oh, I almost got her. Dude, they're all running around here. This is great. Oh, she got the flare gun. Part 7, you bitch! Looks like she has a mustache now. That's what you get for being a bitch. They deserve to die, Jason. No, she, uh, of all Make the people... Yes, suffer. yes, she did. Yes, she did. This is how Jason gets everywhere so quickly. Dun, 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 dun. He is just so cool looking, man. Oh, this is a treat. Seriously. That's my Jason. That's my special. Jason, do you want boy. some cookies after you murder the entire fucking camp? Yes, mother. Good. Uh, let's put a bear trap. Oh, did they repair the car? Oh. Bear trap. This isn't really pushing my PC much either, which is nice. So it looks like someone's at the boathouse. Yeah, dude, this looks great, man. It's such a shame. Where you go? I'm offering insurance plans. You might find them interesting. And again, a lot more of the interesting kills are behind leveling up, and we can't do that. That's my boy. Oh, fuck. So we Hunt still got three people. Okay. Make them pay. 
Just another day in Camp Crystal Lake. Literally, this is Camp Crystal Lake. Pretty big map, dude. Bye! Come here, pretty boy! Can we smash him through the window? Just shut him out. Get over here! No shit! Ah. <laughs> Don't stop, Jason. They deserve to die. Make them suffer like we do. Hmm, dude, he is just so fucking awesome. Ah, see, so this is the house with the radio in it. So let's uh let's bust the door down here. So there should be a radio in here. As a counselor, you go to it and you turn it on. There's a machete. For a counselor to pick up. The details in this are awesome, dude. There's even a bag of charcoal. It's so cool. Painting there. It's like Red Dead Redemption-esque. Newspaper clippings. Yeah, see? Somebody opened up a drawer and found something. But there should be a table. There it is. So as a counselor, you come here, you, you call for backup. And the next person that dies will become Tommy Jarvis. And he comes decked out. He has like uh he has the highest stacks, but it's completely randomized. Let's go here. Ooh, somebody's swimming. And we could also go around underwater, which is really cool too. Or is that just water ambiance? Dude, this is so cool. It's like Jaws. And you could also hide in uh, these tents here. So I doubt anyone's in here, but you could check. Anyone? Damn it. How about you? Huh? Anyone? Anyone? No, oh, it's the other side. Hold on. Anyone? Nothing. How many? Two left. Shit. Let's go to the opposite end. Dude, that is a nice touch. Hmm. Boathouse? Yeah, dude, what the hell? I hate this part. The last two are always the hardest. Yeah, you could slam somebody's head down on a picnic table. Uh, when somebody tries to drive away, you could stand in the middle of the road... And you just mash down on the hood, which is really cool. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Forest Green County, Crystal Lake. That is amazing. Again, the attention to the, de the attention to detail in this game is awesome. And it's going to be gone. Gone one day. Like it says up top, why online only games suck. And we are losing something truly special. As a Friday the 13th fan, it's very sad. But I now know that I have it preserved to some capacity. And I could still enjoy it from time to time. Oh, dear. Oh, 
I hate when this happens. Because when they hide in a house, so say when I use Jason Vision, and this house glows red, you know that they're in there. But if they should hide without you seeing that happen, they could be anywhere in a house or any of these multiple cabins, I should say. And the only way to check where they are is by, say, going here. Oh, that's not a prompt. Okay, you can't hide in there. But, like, for instance, I don't know if they're under this bed. So I have to manually check. No one's in here. Okay, so we need to move on again. So if you're playing offline with bots, which will be the only capacity uh, it, in the future, it could become pretty maddening to hunt everybody down. Because you literally have to, like, search every nook and cranny. Like, we're a detective, essentially. Uh, let's see. Uh... Okay, so let's quit out. We'll go to another map. It's for shits and giggles. Actually, you know what? I have never done this. Let's do... At least there's two things online uh, that, that are not affected. Loading beta. Launching virtual cabin release. Dude. Whoa! Oh, dude, that is awesome! A depiction of the final scene is set in the Voorhees house. Dude! After the success of the first movie, Frank Mancuso Sr., the CEO of Paramount Pictures, wanted to make the franchise into a serial with each movie having a different story. It was reportedly Phil Scudetti, Steve... Menacean and Bob Barsamian who insisted that the sequel have Jason Ali. The role of Ali, a tough member of a local biker gang, was played by an actor named appropriately enough Nick Savage. It was a rough movie for Ali. His bike is damaged, his friends are killed, and he gets his arm chopped off before being hatcheted to death. In an alternative ending, he survives, but that footage, like Ali himself, is cut. <laughs> Just Jessica! Can we zoom in and out? This, this is so cool. Director Adam Marcus wanted to turn the series back to themes of family. The, director of Jessica, the character of Jessica Campbell is the daughter of Diana Campbell, who is a half-sister. Oh, that's cool. Dude. Whoa. A new beginning, third edition. Oh, this is... Dude, this is really cool. Oh, my God. I've never experienced this part of the game before. Erno Lake. Friday the 13th is more than a movie franchise. There are also television series, a comic book mini series, and four mm, novels to date. J.R. LaChapa. As part of the Kickstarter campaign, certain high tier back backers could get their likeness included with the game. One such generous backer was Eric J.R. LaChapa. His best two stats are repair and stealth. Dude, that's cool! Kind of dopey looking. Fuck. Oh, cool. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about that. Walkie talkie. Okay. Okay, uh, did you want to do an intro? Uh, hello. Welcome to the virtual cabin. I'm Chuck Brengard, CEO of Ilphonic. And we are the developers behind Friday the 13th, the game, which you are currently playing now. Is there anything you want to say to the fans? Sure. I just want to say thanks for playing and supporting the game. Our fan base has been incredible. This project has exceeded even our wildest dreams. And that's because of all your continued and amazing support. So where are we? So this is the Virtual Cabin, 2.0 to be exact. The Virtual Cabin was a way for our backers to check out new art assets and discover a few hidden Easter eggs as we were building the game. It was a really engaging way to show a sneak peek at what we were developing. So, why bring it back? A ton of work went into researching the Friday the 13th films for the game, and we wanted to present a fun way to go behind the scenes and learn more about how the movies and the game were made. Consider this as an expanded virtual museum, a space where you can explore the lore of Friday the 13th and take it all in. Who knows? There might even be a few new Easter eggs to discover. If you go digging deep enough. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't mean for that to sound so ominous. Okay, so did you want to... Yeah. 
<laughs> Tiffany Cox and Kenny Rydell. Spring Bake 1985. Okay. I guess these are like developers or something? This is cool. Shelly and his mama. Mythos of Jason lies somewhere between the natural and the supernatural. He is a man that can be cut or killed, but also a boy who survived drowning. In one telling, his immortal, his immortal dark heart switches hosts. In another, he is a woundable adversary. Like a good campfire story, the definitive truth is always just out of reach. That's a Friday the 13th Part 9 reference. Dude, again, the level of detail here is crazy. Nuked ideas. Roundtable about Friday the 13th series special effects master Tom Savini, who created Savini Jason in part four. I thought that a young Tommy, who was the effects kid and inventor, would take a microwave oven apart and put a reflector on the shooter. The variable setting of one to ten. On one, it would melt the toy soldier. My idea was to stick that in Jason's head and cook his head from within and make it explode. So I had to sell that to the money guys. I called him, and what he said was, no, 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 the Friday the 13th formula is killing naked teenagers in the woods with a household implement. I'm thinking this is a household, but household implement. Deborah Kim. The counselor Deborah Kim is voiced by veteran Christina V, who helped voice many popular animated and film projects. The Big Apple. Ah, Friday 13th, part eight! We put him and he was wet the entire movie. Wine bottle. After hooking up with Tina, Crispin Glover? I forgot he was. Wow, this is cool. Jason obliges by sending his head before hacking him to the face with a meat cleaver. You should be careful what you wish for in a Friday film. Waste of budget? Julius and Jason's boxing match in Friday 13th Part 8 Take Manhattan was scripted to take place in Madison Square Garden, but for budgetary reasons, ended up taking place on a roof in Vancouver. The boxing scene, however, was not lacking for effort. Action Vincent Craig Dupree, who played Julius, was really punching Kane Hodder with all of his might. When it was Jason's turn, he punched Julius's head off, sending it flying into a dumpster. Dude, Part 8 was terrible. Einhurst Diner? Whoa! Jason was menaced several diners throughout the series. As many as inspired by the diner in Part 5. Part 5 doesn't count because it's not. Another diner, Jason Takes Manhattan, features Jason bursting in, hunting Renee and Sean. A large cook attempts to thwart the killer before being picked up and thrown into a mirror. The cook was 6'7 stuntman Ken Kersinger, who would go on to play Jason. Oh, he was uh, Jason in Freddy vs. Jason. This is really cool. I'm so glad we're still able to play this. Ooh, hello. The character of Jenny Myers known as a girl next door is voiced by the talented Christina Klebe. Unlike her character, she's a bit of a traveler. Born in New York, Klebe spent her formative years in Germany, France, and Italy. She's hot. Well, the character model. I think there's a second story we could go to. Rough road, stop sign. Here's flat. Opolo's cabin. Blackfield's cabin. Solid weld. Solid weld. Lodge. Get house. Rough road. Signs. Dartboard. Ah, oh, cool. what is this? Game development is consuming and somewhat unique enterprise. The founder, founder Chuck Berndart describes what it's like to be developing a slasher game in a conventional work environment. Funny thing is, we're in a high-rise building. Hey. We're riding the elevator with people who have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, the pitchfork needs to go a little bit further in the eyeball to come out and hang, the blood too, and we turn around and people included in the corner. So huddled in the corner. Okay. Oh, dude, all the masks. One of the most emblematic moments of the movie scene, Jason Times... Oh, this is part eight. Jason stayed in character the whole time. There were hundreds of people on both sides of the street watching the filming. With one quick look from Jason, a crowd would scream, cheer, and go wild. This is part five? Four! No, two Spielberg movies uh, compromised the series, which is proud like it would appear, but only in the opening sequence. Director Danny Steinman arranged the crew to set up Fieldman's backyard. They put up extra bushes, had rain machine, and wrapped the shoot in hours. Dude, that's cool. This is part four. How many fascinations with masks served multiple purposes in the film? According to Tom Savini, as well as adding a darker layer to Tom's character, providing an omen of things to come. According to screenwriter Barney Cohen, they also made a philosophical point about horror that it's contagious. 
The horrors that Jason dispense the horror that Jason dispenses can be passed on. This film featured a recast of Jason. The filmmakers discovered a 6'3", 250 pound nightclub owner named CJ Graham. Graham was part of a hypnotist stage show whereby a magician would put the audience members into a trance and ask them to imagine they were encountering Jason Voorhees. Graham would dress as Jason and scare them in the middle of the hypnosis. The production team, the production team was impressed and cast Graham for the movie. Dude, that's cool. This is interesting. CR, anybody remember these? The detail in that is fantastic, by the way. Super flea market. Ah, oh, this is what it was originally what well, uh, originally designed to be. Camp Blood. The screenplay for uh, original Friday Thirteenth was titled "A Long Night at Camp Blood." Director Sean S. Cunningham, however, always wanted to name the movie to be Friday Thirteenth, even before he finished the script. Cunningham took an advertising out in the publication to stake his claim to the popular idiom. The new title was successful enough that you could see references to Camp Blood sprinkled throughout the series. Interesting. Call for a free chance to win a cruise. SS Lazar. The original draft of Ron Hudson's script had some ambitious plans, including a boxing match at Madison Square Garden, crane shots in Times Square, and a chase between a uh, chase scene across the Brooklyn Bridge. The script, however, budget became the issue. Ultimately, much of the movie was filmed on a ship named the SS Princess Patricia in Vancouver, leading many to, in the cast and crew to dub the movie Jason Takes Vancouver. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, dude. According to director Joe Zito, he and the cast believed Part 4 to be the final Friday film. Not only was the title the final chapter, yes! The script called for Jason's head to be split open in the final kill. Even Harry Mendenfrini's musical cue for the final scene was named A La Muerte de Jason. Mug, released right during the game stage for early 17, the time frame that managed both wide and for some fans vague. This ambiguously caused quite a bit of energy to be directed at Gun Media, in particular the community manager Ben Strauss. It's actually becoming a meme with our community. Someone sent me a mug that said early 2017 and Friday 13th on the front. That's cool. Bugsy and Chad. Wait a minute, hold on. I want to read that. Multiplayer to capture the magic of the movies. Dude, they totally. Like, no doubt. Multiplayer experience that got us the license. Let's go create a rally. Saw it's Cunningham, saw our game, and saw it was multiplayer and could essentially play out like the film. He had been wanting to make a Friday 13th game for a long time, too, but all they were able to pitch was a single player game well i mean look at the nes game right coming soon chamber of horrors god this Ooh. whoa institute of mental health John Shepard played a shell talk Tommy Jarvis in the fifth film, The New Beginning. Tommy psychologically damaged was burned with Jason in the final chapter, sent him to a treatment facility called Pinehurst Halfway Home. Shepard took the role seriously, spending a few months volunteering at a state mental hospital to prepare. Dude, that's fucking cool. Like something he's in. Boyd's. Too bad, like, we can't crouch or anything. Yeah, we can only interact. We can't do anything else. Whoa, dude, this is cool. Holy shit. Whoa. Frying pan? When it came to creating kills for Friday 13th, the game, Gun Media knew they needed expertise. And who better man who helped create the slasher genre? So they brought in legendary practical effects to brew Tom Savini. That's what I did in Friday 13th movies, he said. Creatively kill teenagers in the woods with household implements. It's a living. Somebody has to do it. Wrench. However, one of the most censored kills have been from unarmed combat. In part six, Sheriff... Garrus is sent backwards and broken in half. I remember that. Bloodless kill, but nevertheless the one that the ratings board drew the most trouble with finding it too. Come on, dude. It's a movie. Spear. Filming Friday the 13th movie was always carried a certain amount of risk. Director Tom Legoflin found this out the hard way when he cast the wife Nancy in part six. Nancy played the role of Elizabeth, who Jason speared through the windshield of a Volkswagen Beetle. Real. When it came time to film the shot, Nancy sat in the car as Jason rammed the spear through the vehicle. The windshield gave way, but changed the trajectory of the spear, nearly impaling her. Holy pickaxe. During the final sequence of part two, Jenny, played by Amy Steele, that sounds like a porno name, is defending herself from the pickaxe-wielding killer. In one of the early takes, Steele, armed with a machete, slices something Steve back to his fingers, sending him to the hospital? Film the remaining takes with a prosthetic covering on it. Dude, that's cool. 
hatchets. Ooh. Road Jason takes Manhattan and axe wielding King Hodder appeared at Arsenio Hall show with full Jason regalia. Hodder didn't speak or break character throughout the entire interview. Credit to Arsenio for pulling it off. Purring manual weapons like axes, Jason has never used a chainsaw in dispatching his victims. He did use a weed whacker in Part 7, which Part 7 is a terrible film, but it's fun. Chainsaw was however used at Roy at the end of Part 5. In a climactic barn scene, Pam, played by Melanie Kinneman, fights off with the attacker with a chainsaw, slicing his shoulder to the bone. Special effects Tom Savini came to attention of Friday 13 filmmakers with his work on the movie Dawn of the Dead. Really? Of particular note was the visceral nature of the special effects and kills. It was realism that was hard won. Savini had been in combat, uh, had been a combat photographer. Oh. Special effects created didn't give the same feeling as what he remembered. They weren't good enough. Dude, that's this is fascinating. And it's gonna be gone one day. In every movie, the killer is using machete. Part nine, Jason goes to hell. It is Jason's right eye that shows machete damage as opposed to the left eye at the end of part four. Ilphonic and Gun Media corrected this in the game. Well, I can't play as him anymore, so hopefully. Devs took a poll to see if the mistake could be retconned or let it be. The verdict was should be fixed. Many at Gun, including Ronnie Hobbs, were still conflicted. There were some people that wanted not to be fixed, but we couldn't. But if we didn't, we couldn't live with ourselves. Ooh. Sleeping bag. Part 7 kill. Part 7 is the most censored Friday 13th film of all time. Dude, the rendering in this is really good. One particular kill that the MPA sent back for several revisions was the infamous sleeping bag kill. The movie Jason played by Kane Hodder. He played him, I think, uh, 7, 8, and 9. Jason played by Kane Hodder to pick up a sleeping bag, stuff the heavy dummy in 20 additional gallons of blood, and slam it against a tree. Hodder struggled to make the stunt believable and was relieved when the ratings board limited the scene to one good tree smash. Doc, Jason's relationship with animals is undefined. In part two, Jace, Jeff and Sandra discover a dead dog. It is suspected that it is the work of the killer, although it's never confirmed. In part eight, Jason takes Manhattan, a director instructed Kane Hodder to pick a dog. However, Co uh, Hodder refused, saying it wasn't part of Jason's character. Huh. Interesting. Ooh, a pigeon. Besides Bill's implement in the original Friday, there have been several characters that Jason has affixed to the walls or doors with e or even rafters. The biker gang character of Fox, played by Gloria Charles, who's a playable counselor currently, was impaled in the neck with a pitchfork and left to hang from the of a second or hang from the second story of a barn. The pitchfork was real, but made so that the two prongs in the middle were collapsible. Oh! Archery target. In the original movie, the role of Brenda was played by Laurie Bartle. The audience is introduced to her character as she is moving a large archery target into the range. As she places the target on an easel. The first shadowing arrow shot by the prankster Ned whizzes by her. Late in the movie, Brenna is thrown through a window. As it happened, it was not Lori who stunt, but Tom Savini. Your sleeping bag will be your body bag. Even before they had the license, the developers, uh, even though they had the license, before they had the license, sorry, the developers, the gummy intended to write a love letter to the Friday series and knew they needed the legends to do it. Speaking of the early days, co-creator Ronnie Hobbs didn't mince words. Our goal all along with Slasher Volume 1 Summer Camp was to get Tom Savini, Kane Hodder, and Harry Mandanfrini. They're talking about a new Friday the 13th game because Harry Mandanfrini, Manfredini, sorry, was saying that he's doing the score to something new. So who knows what it'll be. He needed these guys aboard. We couldn't do it. Jason is dead. Two for one. Bigger sale. Friday the 13th Part 3 is the first movie in the series to break the date in Applied in the title. The film picks up a day after the events of Part 2, making it Saturday the 14th. And while there are a few scenes on Saturday, the majority of the film takes place the following day, Sunday the 15th. Interesting. Dude! Oh my god! Sculpts! This is uh, from Part 4! Holy shit! Yes! The role of Tommy Jarvis is one of the few recurring protagonists in a series showing up in three films. Albeit played by three different actors. Young Tommy Jarvis is played by Corey Feldman in 4. I, am, I hate 5. And 6 is whoever the actor is. Who they recreated in this. Who a radio. Throughout the series, Harry Manifini's iconic Kiki Mama Ma has been used to underscore Jason's presence. In part five, his sonic moniker is subverted. Tommy Jarvis, driven mad by hallucinations of Jason, rises from the hospital bed as the voiceover receives Kikata. As he opens the drawer, it's the hockey mask waiting for him. He is for kill and Ta is for Tommy. Ooh. Perhaps. Now before the 13th, heat kill repeat sets the stage for FBI. Oh, the novel. 
FBI sting that occurs at the beginning of part nine. In the epilogue of the novel, the FBI have discovered that Jason does in fact ex does in fact exist and goes about sending a trap to send him straight to hell. Dude, this is pretty cool. Throughout his career, Tom Savini has been called many things, perhaps the most accordingly the Sultan of Splatter. Dev, Ronnie Hobbs gave the rationale for the, all the, the adulation this way. People always say there's a million ways you could slice through a throat, but only one right way, and that's Savini's way. Baseball bat. Kane Hodder did the motion capture for Jason's kills. He is known for intensely, intensity and dedication for his craft. For some of the weapon kills, the mocap team created a dummy for Hodder to physically hit with bats. According to developer Ronnie Hobbs, a problem quickly arose. The dummy didn't last a week. Every morning, the prop people would go back to duct taping it because Kane would just beat the shit out of it. That's amazing! Ooh. Spray paint. The climactic part of 6, Jason pulls Tommy down the bottom of Crystal Lake. Underwater, there's a metal sign for Camp Crystal Lake with the word blood sprayed over Crystal Lake. It is a homage to... The Ooh, I never noticed that! It's a homage to Camp Blood. During a secret for Jason chases Ronnie and Son in a subway car, two spray-painted slogans are clearly visible. Jason lives and Quentin lives. The first is the tagline for part six, and the second is a shout-out to the band that director Rob Hedden was in you. Flare gun? Among the most interesting deaths in part five is the road flare death. It's seen two greasers, Vinny and Pete, are stranded along the road in the woods, a common occurrence. Jason ambushes the two and shoves a road flare in Vinny's mouth. From the special effects shot, they had to take a latex version of his head and jam the road flare in the mouth, making a horrific red glow. Many kills in this game take inspiration from the origin of the movies. There's a kill where Jason spears a concert in the face. For example, this is reference to the VW bug in part six. Yep. Alice, the heroine of the movie, was played by Adrian King. Her appearance in part two was shortcut when Jason shoves an ice pick through her temple. The collapsed ice pick prop was not checked properly. And on one take, did not retract. Thankfully, King wasn't injured and didn't need any med spray. Holy shit. After menacing the crew of Grendel, Jason is shot to death by the android KM-14. Half a body bag and a head, Jason falls into an animate... Oh, this is uh, Jason in space. Weird. Jason reborn as Uber Jason. Same bloodthirst, but deadly or nearly indestructible, and with limited movement for actor Kane Hobby. The full body suit looks sharp, but a limited range of motion on account of the metallic piece. Oh, that's a cleaver? What is that? Pig Splitter! Like the movies that preceded Friday the 13th, the game had its own problems with sensors. Germany's ratings board, USK, found the game so violent that they rejected the game's launch. Firecrackers. Sonic and Gun Media found a player feedback from the beta to be invaluable towards balancing. According to Ronnie Hobbs, Dev, one item that required adjustment is firecrackers. If you played the beta, you know the firecrackers use were the least useful item in the game. Designed to be a deterrent to fool Jason, he could throw something down and then and if he was using sense, he would see sound pings and he could run the other way. Firecrackers can stun him. Car keys. NPA Ratings Board and Friday the 13th franchise has a long cat and mouse relationship. Director John Carl Uchler was publicly vented his frustration with the amount of footage that had to be cut for an R rating. The gore had purpose comparing the removal of it to be like telling a joke without a punchline. That is true. Oh, a broken shotgun. We can't look at the keys? Okay. Fuck you coming soon. Ooh. Like other, like other movies in the series, Part 2 had a difficult time receiving an R rating from the MPAA. In an X rating that was only avoided once 48 seconds had been trimmed. One scene had raised the ire of Central, particularly was the murder scene of Jeff and Sandra impaled by a spear while having sex. I think that was Kevin Bacon? I don't remember. No two Fire 13ths have filmed Crystal Lake at the same location. Bacon's Haven? Stop the slaughter. Never! It's Friday the 13th, man. This is pretty cool, man. I will say. As sad as it is that this game is going away, it's really cool to see, like, attention to detail like this. Friday the 13th lore, Steve Christie is the entrepreneurial son of David and Louise Christie, who owned Camp Crystal Lake at the time of Jason's drowning. Steve takes it upon himself to renovate the camp and reopen it. 
By fixing the camp, he draws the murderous ire of the killer, still reeling from Jason's death. Who knows? If it hadn't been for Steve, perhaps Camp Blood wouldn't would have been re remained dormant and would have been robbed of one of its great fictional Shaving cream. Nudity is one of the hallmarks of... Uh, come on, dude. We all watch it for... Okay. Ah, the final Friday. Adam Marcus subverted the expectation of including male nudity, roughly equal measure, including a scene which has been described as by many homoerotic shaving cream. Hey, man, whatever. You know, if that's your thing, I'm not going to judge. It's just not mine. That's all. Nothing wrong with that at all. Poor actress Dana Kimball played the scarred but tenacious heroine Chris. Margaret Happy, however, played her stunt double. Can do. <laughs> That's awesome. I bet you these are devs. Has to be. And I think that's it. Automobiles in the films. From the Jeeps in the original movie to Megan's Hot Rod in Part 6, there have been many memorable automobiles in the films. Part 5, Ethel's wild son, Junior, crazily rides a motorcycle before being decapitated with a meat cleaver. Without much of a budget, the director had the actor playing Junior, Ron Sloan, to do a stunt himself. It required Sloan to ride a motorcycle recklessly through the forest with a $50,000 camera mounted to the handlebars. In Creepiest part about working on this game was I get these weird phone calls to my personal phone. We worked on the game for almost, uh, I think it was about three years. And every single Friday 13th, we would get these calls from someone. At first, I thought it was someone at the studio, Paul or Dan or something, but it had to be like an F13 fanboy or something. They would use this voice distortion and claim to be Pamela warning us to honor the memory of her son. Sometimes they would just laugh in the phone and hang up, but but most of the times they would just, you know, complain about the game taking so long. That doesn't sound that creepy. It wasn't until one time I called the number back and heard this. Interesting. This is cool, man. Such a shame, though. Song that played during Crispin Glover's idiosyncratic dance is Lion's Love is a Lie. However, during the filming, it was ACDC's Back in Black. It was played on set. In an interview, Glover recounts the scene that was the McFly! That was the dance I came up with. He didn't use it in the soundtrack. It certainly was an unusual, ah, uh, way to dance that piece of music. But the motions of the dance fit properly, so the song is perfect to sing. Ooh. Actress Kemla Moore auditioned for the role of Samantha. When the filmmakers discovered she had a twin sister, Carrie, they offered them both foxy roles of Tita and Terry. This was not the first time Kemla and Carrie's acted together, both having already starred in Double Mint Gum commercials. I love trivia like this. This is awesome. Script, Jason Goes to Hell, is exceptional that not a single teenager was called for in the script. What? What? Wait, 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 wait. What? Okay. Part 13th, more than a movie franchise. Are, okay. Chapter 1, Death Penalty, Series from Hell, J-Cons, Kill... Whoa! The most requested playable Jason was director Adam Marcus's and Kane Hodder's version of Jason Goes to Hell. This ironic, given how little screen time Jason gives uh, in the film. Crystal Lake Police Department. Five 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 oh six. Out of the first ten films, every Friday Thirteenth movie has been released on a Friday, but only four have been released on a Friday Thirteenth. Organization has finally found a home.
Ah! This is really cool, man. Yep. Okay, hold on a sec here. Okay. The red door with a budget of just over half a million. Sean Cunningham had little budget for expansive, expensive lighting rigs, resulting in very dark night shots. Making the best of the situation, Cunningham chose props and costumes that had bright colors. Even the doors were painted bright red. Dude. Oh. Part of Deputy Lee Winslow is played by Jack Marks. A deputy drives through the forest before stumbling upon Jason Shack. Fortunately, the actor Jack Marks never learned to drive. On set, he was giving a few driving lessons, but Marks found his moments behind the wheel the scariest film of the shoot. The scariest part of the entire shoot. That is cool, man. Played by Jack Marks. A deputy was given through the forest before someone found it. Unfortunately, they... Oh, okay. So that's just what that is. One of more popular kills in the series can be found in part two. It involves a lovable wheelchair bound Jock Mark. Kind of a juxtaposition, but I'm not familiar with the film. Considered to be confined to the wheelchair by a motorcycle accident, Mark remains optimistic that he might walk again. Mark took a machete upon the face, causing it to roll backwards on a long flight of stairs. It's a classic kill in the series, made it even more notable that it's the first time Jason kills someone with his signature machete. Friendliness, sportsmanship, integrity, courage, self-reliance, talent. What the hell? In the script for the original film, it is a prowler who puts the snake into the cabin. In the scene where the snake is beheaded, no special effects were used. Out of all of the kills filmed in the series, the snake is the only one who really died. That kind of frightened me, I'm not going to lie. Oh! There are 100 over 100 licensed Friday 13 products and toys. Together, they have grossed more than $125 million in revenue. Only two actors have appeared in both the film series and the TV series. John Shepard and... John D. LeMay, who plays Steven. Both are named John and both, and probably five. One of the memorable characters in the series is Bonnie Hunter and self-stylist cowboy Creighton Duke. Oh my god! That guy's awesome! He was uh, the the uh, the police chief. I'm gonna get that sucker. I'm gonna get him real good. In uh, the Blues Brothers. My watch! They broke my watch! Stephen Williams. The scene in part nine in which Duke breaks John Lee DeMay's fingers in the prison is a director, Adam Marcus' favorite scene in the movie. Part nine was awesome, man. It's cheesy. It's it's not really good, but it's it's awesome. Screenwriter Todd Farmer makes cameo in his own movie as director Dallas. Luckily, he is a stuntman for the scene where Jason smashes Dallas into the wall. Unluckily, the stuntman who took the hit broke his nose. Ooh. After coming up with the name Friday 13, Sean Cunningham determined that the new movie would be about. According to Cunningham, there was very little time to waste in conventional things like character and plot. Next big decision was the setting, and the answer was a summer camp. To promote, his movie, per promote this movie, Paramount had an advertising campaign with Jason slashing through the iconic I Love New York logo. This is part eight. It was later abandoned when the New York City Tourism Committee filed a complaint. Dude, this is so cool. What's this? Oh, we need to find stuff. Oh, okay. Wait. Sweet. Well, uh, now you know the virtual cabin goes a little deeper than we let on. There are quite a few puzzles. Well, more like secrets left to discover. We hid some content in this cabin that will not be easy to unlock. 
you'll really have to think outside the box. So like a puzzle game. Think of this less like a puzzle game designed to get through in like an afternoon, and more like an experience for our community to get to know the movies better, or for the hardcore fans to test their knowledge. That uh, might be too much to say, but we could always cut that out later, right? And um, how will players know when they've uncovered all the secrets? Um, it should be pretty obvious. Think outside of the box, huh? <laughs> this is cool, man. Oh, that's the snake. That's cool. Think outside of the box. Ooh! In part four, Judy Aronson plays Sam, the free-spirited teenager who is impaled while taking a late-night lounge on a raft. The special effect shot required Aronson to be submerged in a near-freezing lake for an entire shoot. This caused the actor, its actress, to contract hypothermia. Ironically, Ted White, the actor playing Jason, came to her rescue, convincing the director to let, out her, let her out of the frigid waters. Padlock. Fire extinguisher. During the final battle in Friday Thirteenth New Blood, the Kellen. Oh, this is my fucking love part seven, man. Tina Shepard sets Jason, played by Kane Hodder, on fire. To get the footage, Hodder was set on fire for forty seconds, a Hollywood record for a controlled burn. The incredible thing was that Hodder agreed to the stunt at all. Several years before Hodder had a similar stunt go wrong on him, he was badly burned, receiving scars on his chest and neck from the accident. Dude, Kane Hodder's a massive motherfucker, dude. He is huge. He's a big man. He's really cool, too. Walking shoes. Jason and Kane Hodder have special connection. Friday the 13th round table, Hodder replayed, relayed a little bit of what it's like to be so close to the icon. Every time I do a convention or an appearance... Somewhere there will always be at least one person who says, hey, do the Jason walk. And I'm like, well, that's kind of how I walk. Hold on. We're going to uh, virtual cabin phone number. Ooh. Oh, my God. Three, four, two. Nine two seven seven. I always hated dialing nine. Who is this? Where is my boy? Oh shit! Wes Keltner never dreamed that he'd get the phone call that Friday the 13th license would be granted to Gun Media. He sort of assumed that we'd make a Slasher Volume 1 summer camp as a sort of homage, and then maybe later someone would give us a call, some Hollywood type, but we really weren't thinking banking on that. We just made the best Slasher experience that we could. Dude, this is awesome, man. Like, I'm I, I'm getting into this.
Dude, this is so cool. All right, everybody, we're going to stop it here. Again, today's stream was more or less to look at the fact that this is no longer going to be available uh, to purchase after the end of this year. I mean, you know, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, it's December 31st, 2023, but you're not going to be able to purchase it. And then after next year, the server shut down. So unless if you're playing a pirated version like I am here, this game will be lost to time. And as I like to say, ethical piracy. It's games preservation. You know, if a server goes down or if the game is revoked from us for whatever reason, even though we paid for it, which I find very troubling, there still are unofficial means that you could do to drop something. There are still unofficial ways you could go about preserving. Educate yourself. Figure out how you could do this. There's nothing wrong with it. Again, you paid for something. Why should that be taken away from you? This is Saikoro signing off today. It is June 17th, 2023. Thank you all for stopping by. Thanks for checking me out. Maybe we'll re revisit this another day if I could find mods for it or if I could find unlocks for it. I'm going to do my due diligence and make sure to stay on top of this because the fact that we are losing such a passionate project that us Friday the 13th fans love, it's disheartening and it's quite upsetting. So again, do your due diligence. Understand the difference between games preservation, emulation, and piracy. There are some distinctions. Support your developers who matter to you. Support developers who are passionate and who are old school. Watch out for those live service AAA games. For better, for worse, unfortunately, it's not going in the right direction. So with that said, enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I'll be back on Monday with Halo 4. I was going to do that today, but I felt this was important to stream. Circumstances uh, now permit it. So thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching. I'm posting this to YouTube ASAP. I, again, this is an important stream for me. I'll see you all soon. Peace out.